somebody at DFD that's interested in using story around how the perception of Iraq and Afghanistan. That's memory, right. that memory point that you made is really critical. Okay. So what we're going to do is take about uh, up to five minutes to take a little break here before we start the third session. Some of you have been here since six o'clock and uh, might need a uh, comfort break. Women tell men to play games and stuff. So I just, you know, for, for guys, we we can really get into this you know, fantasy thing. And, Storytelling. Yeah, you're real fantasy. You know, football, ba basketball, man. I mean, all this stuff. You know, we always play them. So, yeah. If you share the stories, and some, and in sharing the stories, you share your interpretation of it. And something else as well. I had something like that. Were you People have like to have KM at their job, but they have absolutely nothing going on at all. No KM at all. Okay, that's good. How many people have a program underway, but you're hoping nobody evaluates it from the outside? It's just kind of cranking along. How many people got one of those? Okay. How many people have a program that you are going to present in the next year or so for others to see and be judged internationally and so forth? How many people have one of those programs? Got a coupon? That's great. That's great. That's great. The reason why that's great is because those people who have the top of the line programs are probably going to learn something that'll help them get up to the next level and really uh, do that because along the way, as they thought they were going up toward the top, they probably left some low-hanging fruit. Those of you who have never done KM or think you'll never get off the ground, you're going to find out some ways to do it with no money. And those of you in the middle, it might be that so, on the way to On the way to work today, I was thinking as all CEOs do, they actually do think on their way to work. Once, once they get to work, that's all out the window. But <laughs> anyway, I just thought of this. I was like, you know, my training budget for this year was almost $3 million for this corporation. And I sent people to Hong Kong, Los Angeles, or this uh, KM thing I heard of over here in Virginia somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sending all these people out of here, and they all go back, and they all come back, and some of them that really catch on, they get certificates, and then they go someplace else. <laughs> what was in it for me? I'm just, I am just paid for the training budget. So here's the first thing. For each of your groups, and as you report out, we've got eight groups, so you, we want to make sure that each one of you comes up with some nuggets and we're going to be judging you based on your peers here. The first thing is no budget training and knowledge management. Is there something there? Can we actually do this? Okay. I read somewhere, some wise sage told me that if I take notes, I'm going to retain 40% of what I learned in this class. If I actually come back and present to my peers, I'm going to retain 70% of the knowledge. Well, that's great for Fred, but it's not great. Remember, I'm the CEO. What's great? What's it for me? Well, OK, maybe we can put that presentation that he puts together over the weekend while he was coming back from Las Vegas and why I approved training in Las Vegas. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> while he was there, he put this presentation together. So we could store that presentation, but then it kind of becomes like a library and there's just a lot of presentations and more presentations and pretty soon I've got 10,000 presentations and I'm wondering why the guy in the IT department asked me for another terabyte. If I knew what that was, I wouldn't be the CEO. But anyway, <laughs> another terabyte of, of data storage. So, two tasks. And remember they are teams, so we, we are going to introduce competition here. Number one is a training program and introducing KM into that. So all these people are going out. How do you capture knowledge? How do you transfer that into knowledge management? Number two is identify low-hanging fruits that are right here in the organization from a KM perspective that we can pick up. So those are your tasks. You're now on the clock for 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Oh, like 20 minutes. 20 minutes. So you're now on the clock. You have two tasks to report out on. You have to come up with at least three things that you're going to be proud of for each table, because we're going to go table by table. OK? Everybody under, sure of their assignment? All right. You're now on the clock for 20 minutes. OK, now this is going to require each table have somebody volunteer to be the facilitator who can report out. So just uh, anybody can say, I'll be the facilitator. 
it's not, it doesn't put the burden on them to come up with the ideas, but they just need to write them down so they can report out the best three ideas from each table. No budget KM, no hanging fruit, what we can do to make a big difference in our organizations without multi-million dollar budgets.